So the latest Terminator movie has released around the globe and it seems like it is dividing audiences. So today I'm gonna do my spoiler review and for this one I wanted to bring someone in to bring in a different perspective, someone that I know that loves this franchise just like me, my good buddy Cody Leach. Cody, can you introduce yourself? What's going on everybody? My name is Cody Leach. Uh, my channel is also named Cody Leach. So if you've been a long time viewer of Sean, you've probably seen me on a, quite a few of his videos. We've done a lot of collabs uh, since we both started our channel pretty close to the same time. But if you're not familiar with me or if you're new to Sean's channel or if you're seeing this video for the very first time and don't know who either of us are, uh, my, my channel is it's mostly horror focused, but I do a lot of different franchises. I talk Marvel and DC. Obviously, I'm talking about the Terminator franchise. So I'll, I'll branch off and do music or the, the odd video game once in a while. But certainly if you're a horror fan, there's a lot of stuff on my, uh, my channel to check out. So uh, if you enjoy my opinion and don't get too angry at what I have to say, <laughs> go ahead and uh, head on over to my channel and uh, see what I have to offer for you. Yeah, whenever I start up my YouTube channel, I just tried to meet a lot of people, and one of the first people I met that I've become very good friends with was Cody, and we've been basically talking almost every day since over on Facebook, uh, talking movies, talking YouTube, talking crazy people, and today we're going to be talking Terminator. As he alluded to, he also reviewed all the Terminator movies leading up to um, the latest one, and if you watch any of mine, I mentioned him repeatedly inside of them. So obviously we had a lot of anticipation going to this. What was kind of your feelings going into the theater based off the trailers, what you heard, the franchise's reputation? What was your kind of take going in? I had a lot of hope and I had almost as much worry because uh, not only from like kind of the baggage, I don't hate the sequels as much as a lot of people, but they're certainly not at the level of the first two films. So you kind of, you walk into it with that already preconceived notion that this is not going to be best of all time. But uh, the trailers mostly is what had me worried because neither one of them did anything for me. They just showed Terminator stuff. Um, you know, yeah. The first one had that weird soundtrack going on that was kind of like Edge of Tomorrow. And, I, and you couldn't really get a vibe of what this plot was. Who is this random chick that's showing up to save people that's moving really fast? Okay, Sarah Connor's back. That's cool. But where's her place in the plot? Oh, are they doing another upgraded Terminator that's not going to be as cool right. as the T-1000? I, I had so many... So many things that I was walking in that I was expecting to probably be disappointed with, but some of the early buzz and, and some of the opinions of a few of my friends, you included, that had got to see it before me, had my hopes lifted a little bit. So uh, I tried to walk in with modest expectations, but I was certainly, I was, I was as hopeful as I was worried. That's essentially where I was at on this one. You know, watch the trailers and they sold it on, there's more time travelers again. There's another Terminator with cool new abilities. And hey, look, we bought, brought the old stars back. And it's like, okay, uh, we've done that before. Like, what? <laughs> could you try and sell me on something beyond that? And But at the same time, with Tim Miller, I, I was thinking he'd probably get the tone a little bit better than what we got in some of the other ones. And then James Cameron being associated again on an actual story level, that kind of gave me some hope. But then again, it's like, I don't, who knows at this point in time what we're going to get. What was your... In two, three sentences, your review of the movie. Spoiler free. Again, and you shouldn't walk into the movie with this expectation, not on the level of the first two, but as a Terminator sequel, I thought that it was very enjoyable. I had a very good time with it. Action was really good. Uh, maybe a little bit over the top in some spots. That's kind of a modern action movie problem, but I thought that all of the New stars, as well as all of the returning stars, were utilized very well. I liked the new the twists and turns that they did with the story. I appreciated how it was a little bit familiar, which you kind of have to expect with these movies, but to me, it was just familiar enough. It wasn't redundant, and it wasn't like they abandoned the plot completely and just did this completely wacky new thing and called it Terminator. Uh, I enjoyed it pretty much all the way through, and to me, it would, walking out of it, it was like, okay, this is not T1 or T2, but it is clearly the best since then. Yeah, I was really nervous when you went into the theater because I didn't know what you were going to feel because of some of the big, bold things that we're going to dive into very deeply in just a couple minutes. And so when you came out of it and said that you really enjoyed it, I felt validated because I was nervous, actually. Uh, so I saw it a little bit early. And the new Terminator was in attendance at it. I was interviewing him the next day. I was there with my wife. She really enjoyed it. She loves this franchise. So her enjoying an R-rated action movie, that's always a great date. Yes. And so I had a great experience watching it. And then 
my comment section <laughs> yeah. lit me up. They lit me up. And then the next day, I, I or whenever I posted my re- uh, interview with uh, Diego Luna, or, uh, Gabriel, Gabriel Luna, a couple, c- couple days later, I posted this, this, and I had a guy in the comment section, he, ca- he was like, I'm calling you out because you didn't like Alien 3 and you're a sellout uh. and you only gave it a good review because you wanted to get this interview. And, and he literally said to me, like, be honest, do you think you would have gotten to do that interview if you hadn't given the movie a good review? I was like, well, yeah, because why would they have seen my review prior to the interview? Like, how do you think this stuff all worked? This was scheduled weeks ago. But um, I love and then too. you saw it. <laughs> yeah, comment sections. So then you saw it and you're like, oh man, I really enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. And I was like, okay, <laughs> okay. The person, uh, you know, a, I've been watching Jeremy John's stuff for a very long time and have a certain respect for his stuff, but uh, you're on an actual personal level of relate. You gave me val- validity in mind. I really enjoyed the movie. So I was glad that you really enjoyed it. <laughs> so the thing that people have been freaking out about and I, I think for a good reason. They knew when they made this movie, when they wrote the script, when they had this idea. Mm-hmm. And at this point, I better give the final spoiler warning. If you haven't seen the movie, click away, go watch the movie, and then start watching this. They killed John Connor in the first 10 minutes. And both, I think both of us have been very vocal about the fact that we hate Alien 3 because in the first 10 minutes, they killed Newt. So both of these movies are sequels to James Cameron, sequel classic movies, a big plot point in the third act of each of those films was trying to keep a child alive and then in the sequel directed by someone else the child is killed off in the first 10 minutes so people are immediately you're a hypocrite sean because you're raving about this movie when you got to interview the new terminator but you hate alien 3 i'm just using your own words against you so what i have my defense against that how about you what is your take on that Luckily, I only got one comment saying that. And they were, only they were like, one? Yeah, only one comment saying, Lucky. like, oh, you, you, you told everybody that sequels should never be like Alien 3, and yet you like this. And I was like, look, like, I can understand. It's the way that people convey their thoughts that's the problem. Like, if you have right. an issue with this movie, if you walk in and you say, look, I have such a deep-seated love for this character, and to me, he's the heart of the franchise, and yeah. that's just, that's way too much to ask of me, and I cannot get into the movie for that. Totally understand, totally respect to- it, and uh, I would yes, never yes. tell you that you were wrong. But I'd never get that comment. I always get, ruin the franchise, slap T1 <laughs> and T2 and its fans in the face in the first five, five seconds, F this movie, blah, blah, blah. And I'm just like, dude, like, if you step outside right. of that just for a second and really think about the plot of those first two movies, is it about John Connor? Yes, in a sense, but it's more about John Connor's survival to stop Skynet. And guess what? He does that at the end of T2. Mm-hmm. It's the victory yep. you didn't realize that you wanted. Where he, 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 he gets him and Sarah Connor and the T-800 have stopped Skynet from existing. And he has fulfilled his legacy that was supposed to be 30 years later as a 13-year-old kid. Yes. And that's what makes the beginning of this movie so interesting and clever to me. Mm-hmm. Is that we all left T2 and we did Salvation. We did all these other movies that we're still thinking he's going to be the hero in the future. He's going to be this great leader in the future. And the beginning of this movie makes us reinterpret T2 to go wait a minute, he's the guy that told the T-800, we have to go get Sarah Connor. We have to go rescue her. And she's like, John, why did you do this? You shouldn't have done this. You shouldn't have come to rescue me. Mm-hmm. And because they go and rescue her, she's like, we got to take out Miles Dyson. And so you put together her Terminator mode, kill Miles Dyson with his like, no, don't you understand? You can't kill people that they go on the mission that stops the apocalypse. He was the leader, he was the human Mm -hmm. that stopped the apocalypse by bringing together the power of the T-800, the strategy of Sarah Connor, gave both of them humanity, took them on a mission, and he fulfills his destiny as a child. And so when people's like, this movie betrayed T-2, I was like, there's a thing about what you're saying that I totally get. And there's a side to it where I think this movie honored him in a way that the movies before, we didn't know that they had. Mm -hmm. Because the character that we saw, Eddie Furlong's John Connor, stopped Judgment Day, it stopped the Skynet apocalypse by restoring the humanity to a Terminator and his mother. Mm -hmm. That's powerful to me, that's powerful stuff. Yeah, I'm right there with you. And and, you know, it's something where like, 
I, I gotta admit, I do have a bit of an advantage over a lot of T2 and T1 fans in the sense that I'm kind of sick of John Connor as a character anyway, because they've botched him so many times over and over again with constant recasting. Every single movie is a totally different character with the same name. I kind of like Christian Bale, but other than that, it just... By this point, I'm like, I don't want any more recasting of John Connor. I don't want any more new John Connors. Like, I'm, I'm tired of the characters. So when he got blown away in the first two minutes, I was like... Did somebody watch my video? Like, what happened? And they're like, <laughs> I, I was wondering that because I'd heard you say repeatedly, I'm tired of John Connor. I was like, he might love this movie just because they killed John Connor at the beginning. Yeah, but, but see, that's the thing to me. But but like with the Alien 3 comparison, which again, like on a, on a very knee-jerk emotional reaction, I can totally yeah. understand somebody getting that. But if you step outside of your emotion for a second and you look at it, just like you just said, it just it makes the victory of T2 that much more powerful and it doesn't diminish mm -hmm. it whatsoever because the series yeah. now and really all along was never really about John Connor's survival. It was about his survival so that he could stop Skynet and that victory mm -hmm. is still intact. Now you have yes. humans being humans, not learning their lessons, history repeating itself and guess what? Judgment Day is inevitable to a certain degree because we're just going to do the same thing over again and now you have this legion which is essentially Skynet 2.0, and John Connor's legacy is irrelevant in regards to, Le uh, to Legion because that's a totally different future now yeah. that they created. So it's like, it's like those consequences to the victory, and that was one of them. So you can get behind it or you don't, that's fine. It's your own opinion of the movie, but it does not take anything away from the first two films. And it doesn't... It's, it's Judgment Day is inevitable, but not in a T3 sense. Yeah. T3's sense was, no, no, you can't stop it. This is going to happen, mm -hmm. which, like, that was a sour taste to me because that wasn't the worldview of Terminator 2 and Terminator 1, which is the, you know, we have no fate, but that which we make for ourselves. Mm -hmm. Whereas what this movie says is that humans keep being stupid. Yeah. Humans keep heading down this path, but things keep happening to keep stopping it and preventing it. So we do still have a say. It's not determinism of T3, it's humans keep being stupid. And I'm like, okay, that, I can buy that more. That lines, that still lines up more that we keep heading down the same stupid path. And mm -hmm. even in it, the T, uh, uh, Carl references like humans are likely to kill themselves some other way anyway, <laughs> if, mm -hmm. even if this doesn't happen. But, um, but that's the thing to me. At the beginning of Alien 3, or the victory of aliens was just survival. The movie was about surviving. Mm -hmm. And a handful of them survived, and then they took a nap, and during their sleep, the aliens won. Yep. That undoes exactly what happened. Whereas here, the more important victory of T2, the apocalypse was stopped. Mm -hmm. That entire timeline is erased. That's profound. And then the best line of this entire movie for me was when you have Sarah Connor saying something along the lines of, you know, we stopped the apocalypse and then this relic from a deleted timeline accomplished his mission for no purpose. Whatever that line was that she said mm -hmm. describing what, um, you know, the later we know them as Carl does, there's such a great line of like, that's such a smart thing. Yeah. That's the stuff that kind of elevates this movie to me over um, you know, T3 and Genesis that just felt like fan fiction because it's just the same way of thinking of like John Connor, Terminator, Skynet, whereas this one it's like, what if they won but humans were just on a really destructive path? Yeah. What? If, okay, they kept sending Terminators back in time. Why would they stop doing that? Why would they only send them to uh, 1984 in whatever year uh, T2 actually took place? Like, why would they only send to those time? Why wouldn't they send them to other time periods too? Yeah. Oh, those are smart ideas. And where would all of this go 20 years down the line? And I said, I wonder. I wish we could see an alternate timeline where. We didn't get T3, Salvation, and Genesis, mm -hmm. and all these people that are really burned by Dark Fate, if they hadn't seen those three movies over the last 20 years, and feeling the victory of the, like, this movie taking place without those movies burning people out, I think a lot of people would take it a lot better. I agree. I agree. And you know, it's something that's funny too, is like you, you said earlier about the, the big quote of the first two movies, which is, there is no fate except that which we make of ourselves. And the beginning of this movie kind of solidifies that again. Like he takes his fate and makes it to where, okay, I'm going to become this savior of the human race, but in the timeline that's already been established and the legacy that everybody's been telling me about since I was, you know, in the cradle, 
three billion people have to die for me to get that. And then at the end of T2, they change his fate to where, okay, we get the same victory, but now only I have to die for this to happen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, and that's, that's just so profound. And even if you want to do the messianic uh, biblical stuff, it continues that. Mm-hmm. Like, it continues this sort of, like, idea to it. It's like, oh, that's that's really cool what they worked inside of this. And once, like, that's... We'll, we'll get into kind of the rehash side to this one and where people are like, oh, it's just more of the same. Why were you so hard on T3, but okay with this one? I don't know. It just feels like a totally different pedigree to me. Yeah. It's not T1, T2 pedigree, but it's it's that one right down from it of like, this is, if you're going to do a sequel, um, this is... I, I really enjoyed what they were able to do. This. Anyway, let's, so we can get back onto this. I'm sure we will as we kind of go into our rants and raves. <laughs> With the movie in general, what did you love about it? Uh, I mean, overall, just the story direction, first and foremost, with with the the very ballsy direction that they took is like, okay, what you think this story is about, we're going to tell you that it's not about that at all, and we're going to expand it, we're going to bring it into a modern age, and we're going to we're going to explore the same themes, but we're going to explore them in different directions than the first two movies did. That was a big breath of fresh air for me. Uh, Sarah Connor's return, I was a little bit worried about it because. Not only is it kind of an annoying trend at this point, like it's the Halloween yeah. 2018 trend. Hey, we're just going to delete all the sequels that you guys hate and we're going to bring back somebody you love and it's going to be all better. Um, I wasn't completely sold on that as much as I love the character. And I haven't seen Linda Hamilton do anything in, what, 20 years? Um, so I, Hey, I, she was in Chuck 10 years ago. Okay, cool. I haven't <laughs> seen Chuck, so there, that's my fault. Oh, but, there, um, <laughs> she's in a few episodes of Chuck 10 years ago. That's it. <laughs> yeah, but that's, yeah, like you said, that's, that's pretty much it. So I was like, okay, is she going to be able to step back into this role, and is it going to feel like Sarah Connor, or is it yeah. just going to feel like fan service? And that was a big mm-hmm. um, relief for me that she's just as awesome as she was in the first two movies. And where she is, like, as a character, like, mentally, worldview, attitude felt like a perfect pendulum swing from one to two to now. Uh, yeah. It just kind of continued down that path that she went from one to two and just took it in a, even further. So that was really cool. Arnie. And you, you see her as, um, a, it's a totally different version of her that would make sense because yeah. we saw her as sweet, innocent girl, and then we saw her as a crazy person in the second one. Mm-hmm. Like she really is legitimately kind of been driven insane by her desire to stop Judgment Day. Mm-hmm. So here we see her kind of balanced yeah. like in like she's like the one sane person in the world that knows that the apocalypse was was averted and that there's potential apocalypses out there all sorts of things that can happen so she's like the one sane person and so she gets to be a lot more likable while being just as tough as she was in and i loved that about her mm-hmm. yeah Totally agree. And I was also really pleased with what they did with Arnold too which is another thing that i've seen those people that are off board of this movie in the first five minutes. That's one of the next things that they attack is is the logic of what goes on with Arnold's Terminator character. But to me, it was just just like Sarah Connor. It was taking the the swing that they went from T1 to T2 and just adding 20 something years to it, 30 yeah. years to it. So like if you you see the humanity that he gains in just the what two or three days of Terminator mm-hmm. 2 and you add 20 something years to that, to me that was a nice new fresh direction to take with that character and it was it was something different because it wasn't it wasn't typical Arnold T800 performance. It was more so like it's just Arnold Schwarzenegger as a character who happens to be a T800 and it's something we haven't seen before. So I thought that was really neat. Uh, and and action-wise, the movie is very good as well. There's a lot of big action sequences. You get some of the similar beats of the first two where you get chase scenes on the highway. To me, hand-to-hand combat took a big step up in this one to where I, w- right, I would say that. Right. I'd say the hand-to-hand fighting in this movie is better than any of the movies. Uh, not that that's a high bar. A lot of and, it's just robots it, punching each other into the wall. But it, And you saw that in the trailers, but I didn't go into the movie expecting how much I was going to leave the film being like, oh, there was a bunch of really cool melee fights where yeah. they've got sledgehammers, rebar, chains, uh, and, chains, <laughs> and they, they kept kept repeating back to like their swings. So Arnold has like a big whatever that thing he was he had in the finale. Mm-hmm. And it's like, I that that's such an interesting thing to bring into it. Once again, of... Uh, the tales you wouldn't think that you'd leave a Terminator movie be talking about. And then she was swinging a chain over her head and like cutting the liquid metal guy into pieces. You wouldn't think that, Hmm. but it was shot so cool and done in a way that it was like, that kind of made sense with what was happening in those scenarios and the strengths of these creatures. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So that, that was really good. A big step up in the action. Maybe, maybe a little too far in times like the underwater 
you know, yeah, Humvee the, the, sequence the, and everything. The <laughs> plane to underwater Humvee, I was like, come on. Yeah, yeah. Come Dial on. it back 10, 10 decibels here. Yeah, that. Why did we, what, <laughs> why did we have to go in this specific direction where we're underwater in a Humvee? What? Mm -hmm. Come on. <laughs> Exactly. I, I like my Terminator movies to be epic, but I like them to be grounded in epic. So that was a that was a, a stretch for me. It didn't take me out of the movie, but I was just like, oh, OK, modern action. Um, yeah. But, uh, and that's I mean, that's the, one of the reasons people talk about T2 is one of the classic um, action films of all time and action sci fi films is because it d did have groundbreaking special effects. And then you've got a guy on a motorcycle literally jumping off jumping his motorcycle mm -hmm. and then as a sub uh, a semi truck is doing this he flies by it they flew a helicopter underneath an overpass inside of it like they did all that stuff mm -hmm. and that makes it so that you, you can buy into it more so when you're like okay they're they're on a green screen and people are like shaking a car like they're not mm -hmm. <laughs> why are we doing this it's just so far detached from reality that the it makes everything fantasy, not just the fantasy inside of it. Absolutely. And something that I didn't really even speak on in my review, uh, two things actually, something that I really liked about this film is that yes, it's a sequel. Yes, it ties itself very directly to the first two films, but it doesn't make the mistake that uh, maybe all three of them are mostly just um, Salvation and Genesis did where it starts a sequel, but it leaves so much hanging for future films that they're planning on making. Yeah. And this one, like, I, I don't know, the box office is looking a little bit shaky, so I don't know. I'm hoping we're going to get a sequel to this one because I'm totally on board for it. But even if this is the end, if this is the last Terminator movie we get for the foreseeable future, it feels self-contained. It feels like every oh. thread that they introduced was wrapped up nicely. There's there's enough out there where you can do sequels and there's enough where you're like, OK, mm -hmm. there's more you can do, but you don't leave the theater feeling like I have so many questions. Um, right. Like I did with Genesis. Genesis in, Genesis in particular was like, mm -hmm. come on, like these these are like central to your plot, and you're just leaving them hanging. Yeah. Like what? What are you doing? Yeah, exactly. And then the the last thing that I really liked as well is there was clever little moments here and there that again is a very fine line for me as far as fan service and as far as callbacks. They really annoyed me in some of like three especially, but this one there's there's just like certain shots where it calls directly back to T2. Like, to me, the big one is when the, the T-800 is holding down the Rev-9 as he's kind of getting electrocuted and fried, and he's getting fried with it, and he looks up at Sarah Connor, and it's the same exact angle as T2, where she's looking at him fall into the, the liquid uh, metal. And it's just a nice little moment where you kind of, if you're a fan, it's like you get the feels. You're like, oh, this feels just like this. Yeah. You know, it, it's, it's impactful. It doesn't feel silly. It just It kind of calls back in just the right note. So there's moments like that throughout the film, too. Right. And, you know, I mean, Genesis is an easy target because it was mm -hmm. just it was so heavy handed in the like, <laughs> look, we're doing a Terminator movie. It's like a Terminator movie, but we turned it on its head. <laughs> Whereas this one, um, it had the moments, but they felt right. Mm -hmm. They didn't just feel like fan service, even like, you know, they they do um, a turn on the Arnold phrase where I, I, I won't be back. Mm -hmm. And it was a line in the movie that it made sense. Mm -hmm. Like when he says, I won't be back as you know, Christian Bale and Terminator Salvation, that they work in I'll be back by like, what should you tell people when they say, where you've gone? Tell them I'll be back. Like, yeah. <laughs> come on. Whereas here, they, they wanted to make sure those moments made sense inside of the film for the, the most part. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, one of the things I just, I just loved the, the intertwine of what the death of John meant for the story arc for Sarah and Carl. Mm -hmm. Of just such a cool, I, I had so many people message me over the last few days being like, Killing John Connor was pointless. They should have done this. They should have done this. They should have done this. I was like, yeah, but that, I mean, everything you just proposed is like just you're just proposing a totally different movie that we've already seen before. Like you're yeah. like this. The whole idea of this movie, uh, what makes it like a movie that has deep emotion. We're like, oh, that was that was brutal, but powerful stuff is because they killed him off. And they, you have these scenes where, no, like, you know, uh, Grace has no clue who John Connor is. She has no clue who Sarah Connor is. Yeah, or to Skynet. Us, like, or Skynet. Like, we're watching this, and that's what the franchise is all about. Like, so power, and we're like, <gasps> but that's because they won. Mm -hmm. They were victorious in the death of John Connor is, in one sense, totally meaningless. Mm-hmm. 
to, and they use that the meaninglessness, the nihilism of John Connor's death to give Carl this this whole plot line of like where he discovers like purpose is important. People need to have that. I took that from her. I need to give it back. Like that's like. I, when people are like this movie doesn't have anything new to offer, it's just more of the same. It was point. so much to offer. Like I, I just I, I don't see what like, I don't see what you're seeing it like what they saw in the movie because mm-hmm. to me like that stuff was so potent and powerful. When they first killed John Connor, I was like, oh maybe did they just newt this? Did they just newt this movie? And then as soon as people show up and they're like, who's Skynet? What's Skynet? No, what what? And you start going, oh I see what happened here. Oh, oh. And that, I mean, it was just so profound. Like the more I thought about it, I was like, I, I just don't see what other people are like the hate that I don't get it. Like, I don't get why they didn't feel what I felt. In- I'm, I'm with you. And it goes back to one of the big strengths of the first two movies where it has a lot to say under the surface. And it has, you know, it's got thematic expression. It's trying to explore certain things that isn't just explosions and bullets and fisticuffs. So and not to sound insulting, because I know there's probably plenty of people that go into the movies for those things that maybe didn't like this one. But I got to assume that a lot of people that just walked into this and hated it immediately and just have all these things that you that you and I are both seeing in our comments section right now, just watch these for the visuals. You know what I mean? Just like, OK, I got to see John Connor and a robot fight things. And then when you take John Connor out of it, they're like, what? You replaced him with a woman of all things. And it's just OK. Uh, and, and it's it, yeah, I'm, I'm in the same boat. Like I didn't expect, I expected it to be divisive. It's a Terminator sequel, and a lot of people are walking in expecting it. If it's not James Cameron level, then I don't want anything to do with it. Right. And it's like, well, you're you're never gonna like a Terminator movie then. Um, yeah, but, I heard heard some people say beforehand, all I need it to be is as good as Terminator Two. Like, <laughs> like literally, there's no other action. All I needed to do R is be flawless. <laughs> yeah, all I needed to do is be as good as the best of this that there is. Like, yeah. <laughs> uh, that's a bad standard. If that song um, you wrote is not Bohemian Rhapsody, don't even play it for me. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, what's the point if it's not? Yep. What? So, yeah, I, I, I said that at the end of my review that, like, if you go into this movie not burned out on the last three and not expecting it to be as good as Terminator 2... I think it has a lot to offer. I, agree. I should have added into that. Also, if you're not just, if the, you can get over the plot point, if you're not just totally burned by the plot point, and I get some people that like they killed John Connor, I'm out. Yeah, I I can accept that. When they start to ex- elaborate more beyond that, and like I I don't know that I totally agree with some of their reasoning, but if just on a gut level, you can't buy into it. I get that. But I mean, I think it's a movie that like I've seen a lot of people. I, I, I've seen some people say it's the worst movie of the year. Oh, just a, just a rehash with nothing to offer. I, I mean, I've seen so many people just crapping on it that I, I don't understand what they're saying. I don't understand what they saw that um, I really I, I legitimately do not understand where some people are coming from and their criticisms of it. Uh, beyond, if you just can't get over that one plot point, I can get that. But so many of the other things I've heard, I, I legitimately don't understand where they're coming from because I just, that, that as you mentioned, the action has so many cool things inside of it. You literally you remove the the under the a car go, flying out of a jet doing Fast and the Furious routine and then going underwater. If you remove that out of it, great action that's memorable. Characters that I cared about, even the new character. We haven't talked too much about Grace and everybody like that, but um, mm-hmm. for the most part, I, I mean, I think they worked. Uh, yeah. all the criticisms going into it that it looked like maybe they had some sort of agenda that was going to be in your face. I just I didn't feel that watching the movie. I just I saw either. characters that I enjoyed um, that. I mean, you can. Make the point. Well, there was three girl heroes in this one. And we got rid of John Connor. Like, okay, but I, I, I just don't watch movies counting the number of girls versus guys. Like, I, I just don't watch movies doing that. Um, I got a comment yesterday that made me laugh out loud, and it was somebody that they were insulting the fact that I liked the movie, and they were like, "This movie's ridiculous. A five foot tall chick leading the world, please." And I was like. So only tall girls can be leaders, and then I had a bunch of people liking my comment, and like he's like, no, no, no that's not what I meant. So like it was, yeah, it was pretty ridiculous. But it, I've gotten a lot of those comments too, where and and 
I wasn't necessarily worried about it, but definitely whenever you, the trailer didn't have a whole lot to offer and you had a lot of baggage walking into it, when you see the first images of this movie, I yeah. can see that reaction at yes. first where it's like, oh, um, is this going to be one of those? And, but I, I kind of, if you watch this movie, to me, and I wasn't looking for it necessarily, I was just enjoying the movie, but this movie is not like a political, agenda-driven film. It's not out here to give a bunch of messages. There might be like, like we were talking before that we went live, there might be like a little joke line of dialogue in there that's supposed to be fun for the audience, regardless what political stance you have. But it's not a movie that's trying to shove things down your throat. And I see so many comments that it's acting like this is political, you know, Terminator politics or something like that. And it's like, dude, you, if you walk into this movie or any movie rather just hunting for things like, all right, what is it going to say? that's going to piss me off. You're going to find so many things and it's not even things that the director or the writer or the actors intended. You're just going to twist it in your own way to say, oh, because they crossed the border for five minutes in the middle of this film, they're talking about immigration. And it's like, no, um, they went back and forth from Mexico to the U.S. in both the first two films. They're just doing it again. And it's 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 one, it's those types of arguments that, like you said, it's where you almost see it a lot in fandom nowadays. Where if they decide in an early point in the film that they don't like it, they find anything that they can pick apart. Like, oh, he he opened that door just a little too fast. That's a logic gap for me. And it's like, come on, man. Like, if you don't like the initial plot point, like we said, that's fine. If it's too much for you, that's fine. But that doesn't make everything else terrible like I, I admit i haven't watched a jeremy johns video in years but i was curious enough to watch his spoiler and, and he was just ranting and raving about the, the john connor thing to where everything that he brought up was like baggage from the john connor thing like the plot point we were talking about where skynet sent multiple terminators back like you go to 98 you go to 2000 you go to 2002 as like this contingency plan I'll be honest, and maybe I'm alone on this, I've always wondered that from the first two films, why they only sent one. And to me, that was a clever way to address that. And he was like, oh, it's stupid, they could have just sent all of them at the same time. Well, you just undid the plot of the first two movies if you do that. So, I mean, you know, it's, it's one of those things, if you're on board for it, fine, but if you're picking apart things because you're angry, you're just looking to be angry. Right, and I think, you know, back to the kind of political stuff, I think me and you were kind of in the same ballpark of, like, we're... We just don't it. We don't enjoy it, the crap in either direction with that stuff. We're not, we yeah. don't enjoy movies with agendas, and we're just not particularly big fans of people that are uh, either the, you know, the SJW people that want to put an agenda in everything, or the people that are like anti SJW. Like, I just no. want to watch movies. Like, let's tell good stories. If you want to even have a message while telling a story, that's fine. But like. People that are either like hypersensitive to what the agenda not in the movie or people are sensitive to the agenda that it like all of that stuff. It's it's the same two sides to the same coin. Like these people that are obsessed about this movie, they're doing the same things as the people that they're criticizing. Because if you just watch this movie on its own merits, the, this, there's not an agenda. There, there's not the agenda that they think is there. Um, yeah. And I totally get it. Like you, the first pictures that they put out there um, where it's like three females, they don't have any of the male characters. Um, Grace kind of looks androgynous. And so it's kind of like, what, are they trying to say something right now? You watch the movie and it's not like that at all. Like it's yeah. none of the things that like were the all the rumors. And like, is it going to be like this? No, it's not like that at all. It shows a different culture because it starts in Mexico City. And I thought that's a nice touch. We're not in L.A. Yep. We went somewhere else. That's cool. And if you're going from Mexico City to Texas in the year 2019, the border's kind of a hot button issue. But it doesn't mean that you're making a political statement. Like everything isn't a political statement and everything shouldn't be a political statement. And so, yeah, I, I, it's hard for me to kind of even relate to some of that stuff because it just seems like people doing the exact same thing that they're accusing other people of. And it's like, I, absolutely. So that was frustrating for me. So anyway, let's talk about Grace a little bit, specifically on our new augmented human character that a lot of people were angry about kind of going into the movie. Um, I, I didn't really have particularly strong opinions. I just thought the character fit the movie really nicely. That was kind of my feeling on it. I didn't leave thinking, oh, she's awesome. I thought thinking yeah, that character fit the movie and I liked the arc that they gave her inside of it. I left thinking she was awesome. <laughs> so I, I wasn't sure what to expect from this character. I, that was the one thing where I was like, man, she looks real frail. Is she going to be like this, you know, really over the top performance that she's beating all these people up? And this, the first action scene, you buy it. 
and you, you see the way that they shoot it, the way that they have the augment and everything. And that was another cool thing that I thought too. I wasn't sure if this was going to be like, oh, she's a Terminator that doesn't realize she's a Terminator like Marcus. It's going to be a recycled thing from Salvation, and it's not that. It's it's another the the apocalyptic future, post-apocalyptic future is now even further in the future than it was in the first two films. So they have the ability to augment humans. And so you get that nice little dynamic where you have somebody that has the, the expositional placement of Kyle Reese, but at the same time, they have Terminator-like powers. So you get kind of both sides of the coin. You get somebody that can have a lot of awesome action sequences and fight Terminators and have it be believable, but at the same time, you get some emotion. You get a lot of more human contact. There's a story there for why she's so determined to save uh, this girl that's, again, familiar enough to Kyle Reese to be to be nice, but it, not this, it doesn't feel like it's retreading yeah, the Kyle Reese Yeah, nothing like thing. Kyle Reese. Functionally in the story, the same, but totally yeah. different. Yeah, and, exactly. And, and then they gave her a weakness too, that like, a reasonable weakness that you'd make make sense that a human would over um, overheat mm -hmm. if doing all this stuff. It was like fit, fit in nicely that this character can be awesome in bursts, but the longer an action sequence goes on, we're gonna have trouble. That's mm -hmm. smart, and you can do that consistently. It's not like a. It doesn't feel like just like a a, um, a cheap trick inside of the screenwriting was like randomly this person has heart trouble. No, no, no. She can go for about five minutes, and then after that, if she's burning hard, she needs something to like uh, to to ease it. Okay, that's cool. That that works inside mm -hmm. of it to, as a as a plot point and clever writing. Um, I, I thought some of the stuff where they tried to build some intrigue with some of these characters. Yeah, I didn't the think mysteries. That, the mysteries was like, <laughs> come on, what are you doing? Like. Neither one of these, the either the one who is texting Sarah, who could be in Texas, who? Oh, it's Arnold. Oh wow. Oh wow. Or you you move into the uh, you have the scene of exposition where uh, uh, Sarah Connor turns and she's like, so you know you're gonna have the son, you're gonna have the man that's going to be the savior of mankind. Is like, there's no way. There's no chance that that is where this movie is going. Even the way that they're talking about it, the way that it's not affirmed, there is a 0% mm -hmm. chance that that's what's actually going to happen. They're going to give us some reason where they're going to give us the reveal. Obvious, like she's 20 years old or whatever. She's the perfect age to be the leader 20 years from now. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, and then you get to the end of it, it's like, well, the reason I'm like this is because you're the one that saved me. Right. Yeah. Yeah, we all knew that. Like, no one is surprised by this big yeah. twist reveal. Like, I didn't what? hear any gasps in the theater. <laughs> what? <laughs> right. I, I'm with you. That was it. Was pretty funny. It wasn't to me. It wasn't insulting enough to where it was like, oh my god, this really you're gonna stuff this mystery into here, and it didn't derail the film at all. But it was like there were subtle little scenes there where, like you were saying, the exchange between Sarah and um, what's what's the savior girl's name? I'm forgetting. Danny. Mia. Danny. And that's, okay, I'll so talk got, about that in just a moment of the fact that Danny's an afterthought. But yeah, we'll get to that in yes, a second. Yes, yes. So Danny and you have Grace and you have Sarah where she's like, oh, so you're the savior. And Grace just kind of looks and doesn't say anything. I was <laughs> like, well, that's obvious. And yeah. like, I just moved on from it. And then whenever they show the scene where she's a little girl, she's like, somebody save me. And they cut it. I'm like, it was like hmm, right. well, that's going to be significant <laughs> later on. And like, <laughs> it's like, okay, like, you, I get that you want to have intrigue inside of your film, but not every plot point needs to be a mystery. Like we, I get that that worked really great in T1. <laughs> Come on, like this, the, the, there's no one else that these mysteries could be. It's so there's no mystery. There's one person. Like we know Arnold's in the movie. We just saw that this guy's out there that Sarah didn't blow him away. Obviously, this is the guy that's going to come back in the end. So that brings us to talking about Danny, our new John Connor inside of the mythology. Um, like I had no problem with the character, but she very clearly was, of our main characters, the one that was on the back burner. You get like an mm -hmm. obvious big arc for Sarah and kind of diving into what's going on with her, and you give... Carl, this whole backstory and changes for him and what he's trying to do. Grace, you would get her origin story. But Danny herself just always seemed to be kind of like along for the ride. Now, not that she's passive, not that like you don't see the person that they're saying that she is. She steps into leadership repeatedly inside of it, but it seems mm -hmm. like she's the one that they um, 
for this story itself, they didn't know what to do with her to kind of give her her own arc. Yeah, if, if that's one of the few elements that I feel like was left well enough for a sequel. Like, it felt like um, it, it, it's, she f does a very similar job to what Sarah Connor did in the first movie, where she's this innocent girl and she's kind of learning yeah. what this future is going to be. And, you know, Kyle Reese gets all the action and everything like that. Here, you have just the action is much bigger. You have Grace doing all these really crazy action sequences. You have Sarah Connor, who's basically a walking killing machine. So it seems so much smaller in comparison when you have those two women kind of leading the charge. But to me, like you said, she has enough moments where you see why she becomes who she becomes and you see hints of it and you see the attitude and you see the leadership charge and you see her, you know, telling the soldier from the future and the soldier from the past, I guess, if you want to call her that, Sarah Connor, no, this is what we're going to do. I'm the leader. So, you know, let me take charge once in a while. Um, and she even, even though I thought that the sequence is a little bit much, she has a fight sequence at the very end of the movie with the Rev-9, um, where you see the physicality of the character, and it feels like if you got a sequel to this, they would probably beef her character up quite a right. bit, and she would be more like maybe Christian Bale was in Salvation to a certain degree. Um, but like you said, she, she's definitely overshadowed a bit, but she's not underlined in the or she's not overshadowed to the point where she seems irrelevant to where i would really understand people like okay so you kill john connor to give us somebody that the movie doesn't even care about in, in, inside of this movie so um she was used well enough for me i liked her she was charismatic uh the the actress did pretty good um but yeah definitely overshadowed a bit because the other two are just so larger than life during right. the movie. and and of course that is also one of the tricky things you have with a movie like this where you have Sarah Connor, of course she's going to be a dominant personality. Of course uh, Arnold is a T-800. It's going to be a dominant personality. And then yep. you have to kind of give us a story as to what's kind of going on with our our uh, uh, the Grace character. But, yeah. And what, what I also liked, as you kind of, you know, going back to some of the stuff we said early on where people, oh, it was pointless. Why would you kill John Connor? And, like, like you know, for me, that how potent that arc for Sarah is as you kind of move into that the final section of it after Sarah realizes oh this isn't about keeping her alive for her son it's like no she's John she is that person um, mm -hmm. even the way that Sarah interacts with her starts to change a little bit the way she perceives her oh, yeah. and there's like little nuances like that that I don't just that's the, the nice touches to it that that's why it was a sequel worth doing that's why it's not just T3. That's all those things are what elevated to me. And, um, you know, the and it, and it, it kind of reinforced to me, too, that at least in my mind, that Sarah Connor is much more the heart of the series yeah. than people give her credit for. Like, obviously, we love the character, but it's always about John. It's about John. John's going to do this. John's going to do that. But it's a movie that, like you said, that kind of makes you re look at things a different right. way in the first two films when you find out that, you know, she went, especially in the third act where she says, okay, you're the new John, and she goes through hell to protect her, right. almost gives her life for, the movie ends on a note where she's like, I'm going to get you ready. Mm -hmm. And when you look back at the events where she's the one that taught John everything that he knew, mm -hmm. she's the one that ensured his survival and kept him alive. So it's it, in a way, it's almost like Sarah Connor's legacy is more mm -hmm. important to the survival of humanity than John's ever was, and, and it kind of reinforces why the beginning makes sense for those of us that it makes sense for. Right, and, it's, and that's what, once again, Again, those things that kind of like those oh like how potent and powerful that is that we've mm -hmm. been watching this franchise for years thinking all along what the world of the movies thought which is john connor is the heart and soul of all of this even though at times like he, like clearly he was kind of the the side character he was the child character and all of these sequels that we've had over the last 20 years have thought john connor is what it's still all about and then this movie says like no no it was always sarah like Sarah's the mm -hmm. one that was the magic inside of it that trained him. That's what Kyle told us back in the first movie. And then we saw it in the second film. And then you have like with this movie, um, however you interpret what whatever was going on with the Terminator showing up throughout the different timelines. She's the person that's been averting all sorts of apocalypses this whole time. Um, it, whether that was Skynet set them all back or p potential other um 
timelines that never even came to fruition that we not saw nothing about or then this timeline where once again she's this savior character that's responsible for stopping all of them like it's that's what powerful sequels do that they make you reinterpret everything in a way that honors the past while moving things forward and John yeah. Connor is a savior that stopped a timeline from ever taking, he stopped an apocalypse from ever taking place, whether he was the war person that won the war or stopped the war from ever happening, totally honors his legacy. And then, but at the same time, it reinterprets everything of like, Sarah is the one behind all of this. Yeah. And I'm on board for that because I love Sarah Connor. And like I said, John Connor's awesome in T2. And I do like Christian Bale, which is not the most popular opinion, but I'm, I'm of the mind that John Connor has been bopped so many times that if you're ever going to move this series forward, you got to get away from John Connor. And to me, they did a nice, very creative and emotional, and you could tell it was written by a fan, whether people want to admit that or not, um, and somebody that's close to the franchise, a way to, like you said, honor the past, but do something unexpected to propel things forward and not just give us, you know, Rise of the Machines again, where it's like, okay... John's 18 this time, and we need somebody to come back. John's 27 this time, and we need somebody to come back. And it's, so it's I appreciate it's it. It's another one of the criticisms I got was like, you know, you criticize T3 for just being more Terminator 2 stuff, but, you know, not as good, but you're okay with this movie. It's like, but, like, that's the, all those small w ways that this actually moves things forward because Terminator 3... What does they do? Arnold is sent back once again as a good Terminator to keep John Connor alive. It does have the plot twist in the final act. The Judgment Day is inevitable. They can't stop it. They thought they were trying to stop it. But as for the way the movie plays out, it's just Terminator 2. They're trying to stop the uh, you know end of the world in the same sort of way. It was just cyclical. It's the same thing. Skynet doing the same thing. Resistance doing the same thing. Just... And it didn't do it very yeah. good. So it's not the same thing to compare them. And doing it 10 years later. Right. The tone was off. Like, even on that level, like the tone, you've got Arnold doing these, you know, put glasses on and talk to the hand. Um, t like, the, it didn't feel right. This one, I think, feels easily the most tonally in line with the first two. Oh, yeah. But then it's, it's the same genre of film as T2 in that it's a chase movie, it's sci-fi, it's time travel, it's big mythology, it's uh, Christ allegories and illusions and things like that. But it moves the mythology forward. It has people in different places. It has different reasons causing different things. It's not just Skynet doing it again. It's not Arnold being sent back again for the, like, I don't know. It's just... I don't know, it's, it's, it's kind of like the Force Awakens all over again. It, it, you know, you yeah, get you yeah, get a yeah. fan base that you get T three and they're like, whoa, that's way too similar. And then you get Terminator Salvation, whoa, that's not enough Terminator. And then you get Genesis, and it's like, well, that's just weird. <laughs> yeah. And then you get to this one, you get to this one, and they're like, okay, so make a good movie, don't make it weird, keep it the heart of the franchise, keep the storyline similar to the other two. Cool, let's do that. Uh, 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 I don't like that either. Yeah, and it's just mm -hmm. you can't please anybody and it does i kind of bring up the force awakens just on a, on a whim but you think about mm -hmm. how force awakens worked where it it brought the oldies back it kind of mm -hmm. propels the story forward but it also kind of propels this new cast forward for the next generation yep. if you will and this kind of does the same thing and it's just like it's kind of the same effect that i'm seeing in the in the mm -hmm. comment section where it's like yeah that's awesome this is the perfect mix this is what i want or it's not t2 and it's it's mm -hmm. uh, Whatever, people. Yeah, that's what I've been saying. That's a, my official statement. <laughs> saying a lot over the last couple of days because I've had so many people direct message me to tell me that they hated the movie. No one's direct yeah. messaged me to be like, I loved it. <laughs> I had a guy this morning, that, and he was the only person that I commented multiple times with because it was just so ridiculous, where he said, he gave reasons why he disliked the movie, and then he said, my dislike ratio on my video proves that he's right. And I was like... All I commented back was, your opinion is your opinion. The dislike ratio is irrelevant. And he's like, well, it's not irrelevant because it shows how many people dislike you or dislike your opinion and, and they agree with me. And I'm like, 
less than 10% of the people that have watched this video have clicked either thumb. Yeah. And if you're on YouTube, you know most people that click the mm -hmm. down thumb are either trolls or people that fast forward to your rating, mm -hmm. don't like it, and click the thumb and leave to go to another video. Yeah. And he just kept going, and it, 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 that was one of the funny ones to me too, where it's like, I'm right, you're wrong, ha! Yeah. And I'm like, okay. And that's right, so I've been like, uh, cool. Terminator fans seem to be an awful lot like uh, Star Wars fans these days. And, and, yeah. and, and Marvel fans and, Mar like, and DC fans. And, yeah, that's, <laughs> I, I haven't had as bad of experiences with Marvel fans. Maybe it's because I'm a big enough fan that I, I can make everybody happy. They, they don't seem as divided. They, they ha MCU hasn't had its the division point yet, so that yeah. it, it, it it's more unified. I think for that reason. But Terminator closest Star Wars, they got was Captain Marvel. Yeah, Captain. Mar <laughs> um, but DCEU, all these ones have like divided fan bases, and so the, the comment section is just you can't you can't please the people. Doesn't matter no. what you say, what the reasons you give. There's just people looking uh, to just pick sides in a battle, and it's like I don't. What are you doing? Um, yeah. I mean, it's just, uh, I don't know. It was, it was, you guys fight. I'm going to watch movies. <laughs> I mean, it legitimately was pretty disheartening for me the day that I posted my, my interview with the, the, the new Terminator guy. Um, I woke up, got in the comment section, and there's like, you know, 10 people saying, oh, this is awesome that you got to do this. That's that's what my feeling. Like, I'm I'm just a guy. I was delivering paint in January. Like, I, I just started yeah. a channel three and a half years ago, and, like, I'm getting these amazing opportunities. Like, I just feel so blessed in life at these cool things yeah, that man. are happening. And then comment number eight is a guy being like, I'm going to call you out, you hypocrite. And I started going through the comments, and this guy had just gone through and was just trolling everyone. People were like, congratulations. He was like, he had to sell his soul to get the opportunity, though. And being like this, like, come, yeah. like, uh, first off, do you honestly believe, like, what, do you hate me? Do, have I given off the impression that I'm just this, like, this career-minded opportunist and not just, like, this nerdy fanboy that's really, really lucky in what's happened in life <laughs> over the last few years? Like, what what would, what would makes you so cynical towards me and so cynical towards the movie? That's, I mean, it was just like, ah, uh, why are you ruining this cool moment for my community here? A bunch of us are ex like, I'm excited because I got to do it. A bunch of people are excited for me. And then all this person can see is he liked a movie that, or he gave a positive review to a movie I didn't like and just went so toxic. And it's like, I don't, where is this coming from? Why? Yeah, uh. it's, a sh it's a shame, man. I've, I've had my share of it here and there. My, my big one, not to go on a tangent, was uh, when Halloween 2018 came out because I had put a lot of work into that review series. I had whole yeah. full-on storyline skits and all kinds of stuff. I was basically up till midnight every single night editing it and mm -hmm. then going to work at 5 in the morning. So it was a rough time, and it was the first movie that I got a chance to see a day before everybody yeah. else. Because uh, I had a little insider scoop into the in a movie theater that Holly worked at at the time, so it was like so many big things. That was about as big as it got for me. It was like I get to see Halloween a day before everybody else, and the fact that I gave it a, a three and a half out of five, I got trashed for like a week and a half, easy, and it was just like, oh my god, you put so much work into yeah. it, and like you, you get an opportunity that you're so excited for, and can't wait to sh uh, to share it, and then you just get basement dwellers that just yeah, right. and it's just like ah. Oh. Uh, YouTube comment sections. And it's those moments that it's like, it's not like you wanted to give it a three and a half. Like, it's not like you were like, obviously you were looking to give it a five out of five or what you, and you gave it mm -hmm. a good score. You just didn't. And then people just, they stop thinking about others as humans. Anyways, we're, uh, uh, actually, I guess that does somewhat tie into the Terminator franchise and the exploration <laughs> of humanity. Skynet runs the comment yeah, section. <laughs> so that you guys are like Terminators out there. Uh, you didn't get the right message from Terminator 2, but you're using it against me. You know, so, um, <laughs> any, what have we for, forgotten to talk about inside of this one? Uh, anything in final um, thoughts? Maybe, maybe some logic issues yes. that we had yes. i know good, you and good, i had good, a couple yeah. of them right, um, right 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 logic issues and then let's talk a little bit more about carl but yeah logic well i guess well we're talking about characters so i guess we can get into carl what i one of the main things that i liked about it was that he was as human as you're going to get with the t800 it seemed um where he showed up and, and on, on paper it might sound terrible oh the terminator is called carl in this and he runs a drapery business and he has a family what but when you walk at the movie and you kind of 
you explore the world that you're in now and the time period and the repercussions for what happened in T2, to me, it never really hit me like a brick in the face. Like you see Carl's draperies on the van and I already knew it was going to be Arnold. It wasn't right, going to be a big reveal right, for right. me. So he walks out, Sarah Connors gets ready to shoot him and you're like, oh, so it's the exact same Terminator that killed John. Um, and then he fully acknowledges it. He's, you know, he's putting limes and Coronas and passing them out to everybody. And, and Sarah just wants to murder him in front of everyone. But he's trying to explain, like, you know, I've been I've been trying, like you said, trying to give you purpose, because once my purpose was fulfilled, I was a relic from a time that never came. And I was my existence was pointless. And I found reason to exist with this family that I've fathered this guy or this kid and I, I've been a husband I've been the perfect husband which to me was another really nice moment of humor which is something we haven't said this movie movie does have clever moments of humor that don't feel like I think it was you that called it SNL skit humor yeah. in, uh, in Terminator 3 it yeah. didn't feel like that at all it was like the scene when he's talking about like I had a guy that wanted to put you know mute colors in a <laughs> girl's room and I said don't don't do that <laughs> yeah. like that was funny it, so, and Arnold um, improved all that that was yeah, that was all that was, it, that was all Arnold on set. It's not in the script. He just did this little riff deal, and they went with it inside. And you're like, that sounds like an Arnold joke that he would just start doing something like that. But yeah, they they yeah. felt like, uh, you know, it's proper organic humor that it grows out of the tension in the characters themselves, rather than like, yes, um, let's force like he pulls out the glasses out of his pocket. And they're silly looking. <laughs> like, oh, come mm -hmm. on. No, that's that's broad humor. That's easy humor. Like, what's mm -hmm. build to a moment that's kind of funny of, like, he's got a name like Carl. Like, that's just as generic of a name that he can have. And so what mm -hmm. would Sarah respond to discovering his name is Carl? Like, people call you Carl? Like, I'm never going to call you Carl. <laughs> yeah, that was great. Yeah, that, that the moments like that were, were really nice for me. Because you do need a little humor, because T2 certainly had it. But like you said, it was, it was organic. It was natural humor. It was humor that made sense. It wasn't like they took the script and said, let me make room for a little riff here and put it in. And yeah, it was natural. But you get to the... The storyline with Carl, where this T-800 found purpose in fathering this family and kind of the heartbreak where as soon as Sarah found him, he realized that this is where now I have to face the demons of my past, which is something that a Terminator would never even really acknowledge if he didn't have some form of humanity grown. So I loved that. I loved how he immediately was like, OK, there's these this family that I've been with for 20 something years, a son that I've fathered from birth and this woman that I've you know been companion with for the entire time. And I have to tell them the day has come. You're never going to see me again. Just like that. And it was it was tender and kind of bittersweet to where you kind of it's powerful. But at the same time, it kind of where he acknowledges, like, do you love them? Not like a human can. And so which means that he cares for them and he has an understanding of what love is, just like where he says to John, I understand why you cry now. But it's still it's something that he can never fully have. So he does whatever he can to write what he has done, which is father that family. Now they're going to be fine and help Sarah and. Um, Grace saved this girl and take out this Terminator, this Rev-9, and he just slipped right back into that role. I believed him in the action. Uh, I loved his interaction with Sarah Connor because oh, it was yeah. very similar to T2 where she didn't trust him and she was kind of angry at him, but she kind of had to grow that, that understanding, and this was probably even harder of a growth for her. But um, that, that's why that moment at the end where it was similar shot to T2 where he's sacrificing himself and he's just getting obliterated, holding down this Terminator and making sure that he can't escape and looking at Sarah for John. Like yeah. when he said that, I was like, oh, like I almost <laughs> that was one of those moments where it hits you in the chest. Right, and I was yeah. like, oh, that was really good. <laughs> right. And, you know, right before that, you know, she calls him Carl, you know, Carl, yeah. get up, get him up. And, you know, it's. That's once again where kind of some people, the movie's pointless, that, you know, it misses the heart of T2, where T2 was all about this bond between the Terminator and John Connor, and this doesn't have that. I was like, it doesn't have that, but that's not the story it's telling. And if it did uh -huh. that, then it would just be, a, it would just be a rehash. But it has all these other very interesting emotions in and of itself. Like, yeah. when you have this whole idea that, um, you just play out what if a successful Terminator that killed his target is still a learning computer and learns mm -hmm. the lesson of T2 after he's already killed John Connor. 
That's interesting. Like that's like, oh it wow, is. that's smart. Like what they did there. And then what would he do to fit in? And like he finds a very broken person that he can just be the the father figure inside of it that doesn't need to be other things. Um, mm-hmm. Like like you like oh that's so cool to like take what was in T two and play it out for twenty five years. Play it out for twenty years or however long it was. And you go oh like that's. Uh, really potent stuff, and then once you, when you tie it so closely to Sarah's story and this father, this family he has, that you get the laughs, and then just little lines of dialogue. You know, I told them, you know, I won't be back, and then you know, for John, um, her calling him Carl, that hits the emotional notes in a totally different way. But that ter- Terminator Two had inside of it, and I just I. I don't know. I wonder if some people, if they'll they'll warm up to this one once they get past the initial shock. But I, I, I just so. feel like there's so much inside of it that um, I don't know. It was when I saw so many negative comments to my positive review and people direct messaging me. I hated it. Like I it was. I, I get people disagreeing with me all the time. Like that's that's not a new thing. Oh yeah. But when Same it was here. a movie with a franchise I love so much and a sequel that was like I, this, and I said it in my review. This is the one that feels like a proper sequel. It doesn't feel like fan fiction because I enjoy mm-hmm. I enjoy the last three as fan fiction, but this one, this one felt like it continued it and it gets higher up, closer to what they were doing before, and then so many people just having such a. Uh, you know, I, I had someone message me saying, oh, man, I hated it. Worst movie of the year. I hope you had the same experience. And I almost snapped on the person. I almost went off on the guy. <laughs> and I, I, I was able to hold back just enough. But it was like, why would you want me to hate a movie? I don't understand it's, that. It, and so yeah. I, 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 I've been debating if I, how, how much I should just even stop getting in the comments. Because I don't want anyone to take my, my you know, the, how much I enjoyed this movie away from me. And with so yeah. many people like just trying to get me to hate it, it's like, I don't, what are you guys doing? So, yeah, anyway. I, I've already kind of checked out. I, like I said yesterday at some point, I was like, oh, this is really going to bring those people out. I'll say, all right, bye comment section. See you next time. Um, so it was kind of like that. And, and, and you know, one thing, the, the big negative that I heard, uh, and it came from Jeremy Johns, and I have, a, I have a very bad feeling that a lot of people that are taking a charge against this movie are influenced by his review. Um, he had said that the whole element with Carl makes the ending of T2 stupid in a sense that, well, he could have just lived in a cabin with them and he didn't have to kill himself. And I was just like, that that's where I say where people get negative on a movie and they just start trashing things. Yeah. It doesn't even make sense. Because to me, I was like, okay, well, if that's your issue with this, and this isn't an against Jeremy Johns, but if, if anybody takes that view of, well, now that makes T2 stupid, it doesn't because, one, they pretty clearly say that he has to be obliterated right with the t-1000 and the elements of the first t-800 so that skynet can never be so if he had just went off in the cabin in the woods that impending skynet would still be there aside from that the dude was obliterated all to hell in t2 right. <laughs> like right. you're not gonna walk into a walmart with that guy and have everybody just not look at him right. you know what i mean so like carl in this he's he doesn't even have any battle scars until sarah shoots him and he looks and he goes this is going to be hard <laughs> yeah. to explain to Alicia. Yeah. And it's like, and I don't know. It's one of those things where I, there's so many of the negatives that I've gotten. I'm like, I can easily rebut that. Right. And, and yeah. I mean, it's, it's like, <laughs> like the, even in Terminator two, he's on auxiliary mm-hmm. battery. Like he was, he yeah. died briefly and came back because of his aux- auxiliary power. So he is mm-hmm. as, I mean, he's missing an arm as skins missing off of his face. It's just not the same thing as a fully functional guy that's still adapting. This, I mean, he was. Like, mm-hmm. it, it, you just kind of think, if you watch a movie and you're on board with it, then there's you can fill in the gaps with grace. You can fill in the gaps, being like, okay, yeah, there's plausible reasons that this makes sense. If you're just angry and cynical and frustrated, then you just see cynicism everywhere you look. Like, well, if this makes no sense. Why did they just do this? Well. There's an obvious explanation. There's an obvious difference between these two things. Or, you know, mm-hmm. I just like when people immediately were like, this is just like Newt. Well, there's there's obvious reasons it's not like that. If you didn't like the plot mm-hmm. point, once again, fair enough. But it's not the same thing. There's an obvious victory that's still in place. So yep. I, that's that's been the part to it, that the, the cynicism that's been very frustrating. Mm-hmm. Me. Now, the, the negative that I think we discussed uh, online, but not in this video, there, there does seem to be a little bit of a lack of logic between how does Sarah know where to go on a on a road yeah. in the biggest city the, in the, the, the world? 
Yeah, that was the thing for me, because like I, I interpreted the whole thing with uh, when she started talking about the text messages. And once we finally figured out that it was Arnold Schwarzenegger, you know, for those of us that didn't know, when they explained that, I, yeah, when they explained that, I went, OK, so that makes sense. So they sent back a mass amount of Terminators with the same mission, with the same target, but sent them to different time periods as contingency plans, which I'll say again, I've always wondered as much as I love those first two films. Um, so I went, OK, well, Arnold was programmed with this mission with the knowledge that all these t other terminator models were going to be sent back and once he gained his little humanity and he wanted to help sarah out he already knew when where exact coordinates and he just kept sending them to her like hey 1998 mexico city go here hey 1999 you know phoenix go here and she was taking out all of these terminators the problem is when you get to when she shows up in the movie that's not skynet that's legion that's a Rev-9, and I don't, I, I don't understand how Arnold knew, or Sarah knew, how to be there at that exact time, at that exact moment, at those exact coordinates, because Arnold doesn't have any knowledge of Legion, and Arnold doesn't have any technological ties to Legion, so I did have a little logic gap with that, where I might rewatch the film and figure it out, and maybe that's in there, or maybe it was something they were going to explain later on, or maybe it's just one of those plot conveniences, but that was a moment where I was like, Mm, no. Yeah, I mean, they just say some line of dialogue that, uh, you know, whenever the time stream is disrupted, then it, it makes a big splash. That it, like, Something like that, you're like, okay, that's some screenwriter mumbo jumbo. And it, de yeah. even if I can buy screenwriter mumbo jumbo, that's fine, because we're, we're in a time travel movie. Mm -hmm. But when you have Sarah showing up at the right place after a car chase, that's a contrivance. That's just, you're being too convenient. Um, with the sum of stuff. All right, anyway, let's kind of close out on, on this one. We both really enjoyed the movie. This is kind of the Terminator sequel that we've been, been looking for for a while. Any kind of closing thoughts real quick? Uh, if you have not seen the movie yet, and I don't know why you watched this review all the way to the end to hear this, but uh, try to walk into it with an open mind. Try not to expect T1, T2 level, and try to see the reason for the plot point that kicks the movie off. Uh, don't take it as a punch to the gut beyond the, the way that they meant it to be a punch to the gut. Um, so see the movie for what it is and for what it can offer, which hopefully we've conveyed what we got out of it, which I haven't heard um, a whole lot of in the comments section aside from cool explosions or I hate you, you killed John Connor. So um, go into that. Um, and if you don't like the movie, I know we're, we're attacking trolls a lot in this video, but that's fine. You're, you have a valid opinion as long as you can express it clearly, especially if you're going into a YouTube comment section. Your opinion's no more or less valid than ours. Just try to be constructive about it and try to be somebody that's mature about it and not just <laughs> trash the movie or post spoilers in a review where I clearly say, hey, don't post spoilers in the comment section. Wait for the spoiler review, like things like that. But if, if you like the Terminator franchise, I have a hard time seeing why people would not at least enjoy this one as a Terminator sequel. Where can we find you on the Internet? You can find me by searching my name, Cody Lee. Join us down below in the comment section. I know a ton of you disagree with what we said. I actually I didn't know he was going to agree with me. I had Maybe the discussion would have been a little bit more lively if we hadn't been on basically the exact same page on everything. I didn't know that when we scheduled this before we saw the movie, but I know a bunch of you disagree. That's awesome. Just do so respectfully down below in the comment section. You can check out links to our videos and stuff like that right over there. Thank you so much for watching.